Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. Come to look at a Ford Transit. So I'm already a little way through this van, but you can see there the uh, idle pressure is 82 millibars. That's hooked up to the PPF pressure sensor there. Let's get it up to 3000 RPM and see what we, um, pressure we have. So, we got an error there. So let the rest back down. So what that error means on the manometer is that the pressure is too high for it to read. So here's the next bit if we have a look underneath. Someone else, not myself, they've opened the uh, catalyst here to let the uh, vehicle start because it wouldn't start. So if you notice there, look, there's a gap. So the next part is why have we got the headlight out? Uh, we have taken off the airbox and we'll show you the air filter here. So if you see these sort of squished in lines and you look at the other side here, sort of split there in the middle. So what I was doing, it was sucking up inwards and it, the vehicle wasn't breathing basically, so it was collapsing the air filter. So we managed to get that bolted back together there, get it nice and sealed. So we got that signed there, exhaust filter over limit. The had blue one slashing as well. These are some of the codes here that we've got. Vehicles in conditions are incorrect for the particle filter regeneration. Uh, soot accumulation, airflow in range but lower than expected. Low airflow detected. Now the low airflow detected is because of that filter I just shown you. Well, I'm going to assume it's because of that because of course it is blocked. Um, other than that, we would have maybe to look into it. But for now, we're just going to clear that code, change the filter over. We have uh, temporarily a uh, pretty decent second-hand filter, which we're going to chuck in just for temporarily, just so we can get the vehicle running. And um, we'll come back to do a service as long as the uh, customer uh, agrees with that. Okay, so here in my van, I've got the Milwaukee compressor. I'm going to use some water and I'm going to use the launch DPF cleaning fluid. We're going to mix 50% fluid with 50% water into this pressurized gun here. Okay, so we're going to remove our manometer from the pressure hose there. That's what we're getting the reading from because uh, some of these Euro 6 uh, Fords, even though they've got the pressure sensor right there, it doesn't give you a reading on live data, so you can't check it on live data. So that's why we use the uh, digital manometer here, just to manually check it. So we've got the cleaning gun there hooked up to the pressure hose. That pressure hose runs just down there, straight to the top, just behind the turbo, right there. Okay, that's connected up. We can now get the fluid spread in. Hopefully there's not enough, not so much back pressure that it's gonna blow off. So it can happen sometimes if the pressure's got nowhere to go. It'll just kick back. Okay, so that's all of the fluid now in, and we'll let that sit for about 10 minutes. Now, I don't know if you noticed when we started there that the rust on those bolts was quite horrendous. So, uh, what I can say is that this wasn't just opened just a few days ago. That was clearly opened maybe six months ago or a year ago, and they've just been driving that around like that. Now, of course, what that does is once that exhaust is separated, once I was sitting in the vehicle there, I had it running just for a minute, you can just smell the fumes coming into the cab directly. Uh, it's a very dangerous thing to do because you can pass out uh, from the fumes, it's just coming directly into the cab. Okay, so I'm gonna clear what codes I can just for the moment. So we should get rid of these airflow ones. These uh, DPF ones might come back immediately. Now we can uh, start the vehicle up. If it will. Oh, just about. It struggled there. Of course, I've got the uh, secondary catalyst there, reconnected or whatever you'd call it.
got the safety gear on. So I've just been going through the live data there. I have, I've actually found the particle filter pressure there. I was looking for the differential pressure, uh, but I couldn't find that. Okay, I just typed in particle filter and then found this through the list. So we actually have got the particle filter pressure there. It just comes up under that diesel particle filter inlet pressure. So you can see there, if we change the reading to HPA, it's on 280 at idle. So let's uh, connect back up the manometer and see if that says exactly the same reading that that's given. So the manometer there is saying 37 millibars. So I think we've got a dotty differential pressure sensor there. So you can see that's now on zero because we've got it unplugged from here. And we've got the manometer connected to it. So let's just put that back on again. I don't have millibars on there, but HPA is exactly the same as millibars. Okay, we're going to use the other half of this bottle to do a second clean while the engine's running. And we just topped it up there with the water, so it's nice and full. Okay, all of that fluid is now being pushed in there while the vehicle is running and we'll uh, have to let that work its way out again. If we come back around to the side here, we should see some more smoke and fluid coming out pretty soon. You see there the coolant temperature is at 91 degrees so just because we had the code for conditions incorrect we're just checking all of the sort of related stuff so one of the things is that the engine coolant temperature if that doesn't go above 90 degrees uh, you won't uh, get a regeneration it won't do the, re the self regeneration or self cleaning DPF percentage is there. Next one that can cause incorrect conditions is that outside temperature there, 8 degrees. If that doesn't work, your DPF won't regenerate either. Another one here is the exhaust gas temperature. You can see that one there now, that's a faulty sensor there. See the, the readings there, the voltage, it's the lower sensor. And you've got the other sensors there that are reading correctly. Okay, manometer there connected back up. We are now on around 8 millibars of pressure. That's going to continue to come down there. And I'll use my laser pedal depressor again to hold the revs up. Around about where we started, I think it was around about 2500 RPM. It's a bit, doesn't want to sit at 3000 this. You can either get it to 25 or else it's just a bit sensitive. If you try and move it a little bit further, it just goes all the way up. So we'll try and get it exactly where it was before. It's a, it's a very sensitive accelerator. We're not, not accelerating it up. It just keeps going up on its own. Some of these modern cars are very difficult to just get it to hold at a certain rev. Give it one more little nudge and then it just goes up either holds there or goes all the way up. So that should do there. Forty four millibars. Okay, so you can see there now we had around 44 millibars at around 3000 RPM. 
and we have now six millibars on idle now compared to before uh, i think this i'm not sure what this maxes out at maybe a thousand uh but before obviously when we put up to about 2500 rpm this just maxed out and it said error uh, so i couldn't read it because the pressure was too high so we now need to either replace well we're going to finish up here for now this is what we, we've come to clean the dpf we didn't bring any sort of parts with us because we didn't know what we needed. But I'm going to recommend a new air filter. We've just put a second-hand one in there. It's a pretty clean one that came from an old service. And we're going to recommend changing maybe the, the sensor here. We're going to see if we can do some adaptions on it to get it to work right. But it's most likely going to need a new one. Okay, we're going to do a particle filter reset. And then we'll do that for the particle filter pressure sensor as well. That's done. We're going to reset the catalyst as well, because it's got the blue warnings. And now we're going to do the reset the particle filter pressure sensor. We might have, uh, we've got weak signal here, so this might take a bit of time. There we go. Now we're just waiting for it to power down. Okay, I forgot to mention as well, a question everyone asks, what uh, scan tool is this? It's the Launch Eurotab 2. Now we're just going to reset the uh, start inhibitor. So you've got the mileage countdown there. We just need to reset that for the AdBlue. It's a little bit weird that we've got the AdBlue error on there and the countdown, but we don't have any fault codes coming up on the system here for it. So we're just going to reset it anyway for now. Okay, so we're just down here at the AdBlue injector. We've unplugged it and we can feel there that it's completely blocked. Let's just get the uh, camera down there. Look at that. Completely blocked up. So we're going to use our specialty AdBlue cleaning tool, which is a big screwdriver. And just try and break up as much of that as we can get as much of it out as we can as well out of the hole there right we're all the way through we've got all the way through now I'm just gonna now try and just break off all this dust loosen it out just get it out so tough it's bending the uh, pick. Got some warm water, hot water. Get that sprayed in there. We've got a little bit of mix of uh, DPF cleaner in there as well. And you can see we are getting there. It's not perfect yet. Okay, we've just cleaned off the front of the head blue injector there as well now. And the port is about as clean as we're going to get it. Okay, we're going to see if we can possibly test the uh, a blue injector. And we can see there that the blue injector is working.
So that's the AdBlue injector all put back together. That's all tested and working fine. Okay, after cleaning the AdBlue now, we've again reset the catalyst system and just primed up the uh, AdBlue injector. That's successful there, you can see. All right, Andy, uh, 1.5 DCI. I've had the boost back, so now it's gone a bit flat now, but it's just cranking over, cranking over. Uh, cranking a bit slow. Sounds like it's low on compression. It's got fuel there. Uh, there's no faults in the diagnostic. I don't know. I don't know if it's lost compression. I don't know. I might need a second opinion on it, mate. Okay, so that's it. We are basically all finished here on the Ford Transit. Right, so you can see there with this Ford Transit anyway, is uh, it's a little bit of more complications than I was first expecting because uh, I wasn't told there was there was an, any AdBlue faults to deal with, uh, just a uh, blocked DPF. But uh, yeah, we, you can see we've got the DPF down, the pressure's down. Uh, I don't really understand why the rear end of the exhaust was separated. Why it, why it was left separated for so long because the bolts had built up rust around them uh, I had to brush them down before, the, before I could wind the bolts back in and get that tightened up uh, the AdBlue system has all been, that's been cleaned out the other fault is that the pressure sensor is reading way above what the pressure actually is so we're going to have to come back and replace that and I'd probably suggest doing a service on this vehicle now apparently his normal mechanic uh, just didn't do the AdBlue, so that's why I was sorry, the DPF, so that's why he called me out. But his normal mechanic apparently has been servicing this, but it doesn't look to me like it's been serviced for a fair while, as you can see there. Um, so, yeah, I've suggested I'll have to come back and change the DPF pressure sensor. Um, possibly we'll start looking at a MAF sensor if that comes back, uh, any sort of airflow faults, and do a small test on it. And that's about it. So yeah, we'll see you on one of the next uh, videos.